Hello everyone, it's me again. Um, first thing you have to say first, I'm so, so sorry that I haven't done a video in a while. I've just been completely busy with university work, band work, um, work in general. I just got myself a job, I've been working for the past few days, it's been exhausting. But I thought, because I haven't done a video in a while, I thought I would do this one. In case you haven't noticed, I just recently got my hair done. For myself, it was a little bit of a change, really. Long thing I was getting a bit dull for me. I probably will grow back eventually, but I thought I'd get for something a little bit new. Shed right at the back. And it's unbelievable how many Martin Gore references I've been given so far. Anyhow, I thought that I would do um, this video first because this one was something that I was originally going to do before. And I thought, you know what, I might as well get this one out of the way. I will be doing another video after this one, so if I look the same, because I'm doing two at the same time. So I want to, first I'll give a shout out um, to my friend um, Snowy Loafer. She is absolutely amazing. I strongly advise you to check out her channel for you if you haven't. Very similar to the style. I've got very similar book styles of editing and subject to talking about. Um, she did ask me to do a shout out, so hello. I'm going to be doing my personal top 10 goth albums. Now this isn't set in stone, this is just my personal preferences. A lot of people have been asking me which goth albums do I find are the best, and ones which aren't heavily commercialised from pop music or within the goth culture in general, so... And luckily enough, these aren't the ones which I personally like, and it's a bit weird to say. I do like them, but not to the same extent that I see these albums at. So, with that in mind, as I mentioned, it's in my opinion. For those who are just getting into the culture, I strongly advise you to check all these albums out, because these are albums which people tend to miss for some odd reason. With that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so for number 10, we are going to go with God's Medicine by The Mission. Now, The Mission is a band I've commonly talked about, and when I first got into them, it was because of this album. It's a well-known album, I can see why, and there's not really much that is wrong with it. It's got that very Sister Mersey-esque guitar vibe from the first album that Wayne Hussey um, created. He obviously took it in this album. It's a lot more, I don't know how to describe it, it's a lot more weary than the early Sister stuff. With the mission, they're always being counted as this hippie goth band, and in many ways, once you listen to this album, you can kind of see where they're coming from. It's got a nice mixture of the dark and gloomy whereabouts, and then it, it collides with like the softer, hippie-ish side that we refer to as hippie goth. The good few songs to recommend from this one is obviously Wastelands, which is the opening. You can never go wrong with that one. I personally like to also look at Dance on Glass, which is a very beautiful dark song. If you want to go for something which is slightly more upbeat, then I'd probably suggest Blood Brothers or And the Dance Goes On, as well as Severina. The next one I'm going to be doing about, this is actually a pretty hard one because there's so many good Cure albums, but overall, I'm going to say my favourite Cure album has to be Pornography. Of course I'm going to go for Pornography. Pornography I really rate the best out of that era because it just held so much more dark and macabre feel to it. As soon as you listen to a track like A Hundred Years, you just know that you're in going to be entering into a cesspool of misery. The good ones I recommend from there are 100 Years, Hanging Garden, especially Cold and Simon's Twins. Now, a lot of people are probably going to expect this in disintegration with Blood Flowers because they are good albums, or 17 seconds, but overall I prefer the pornography album. Okay, number 8, I'm going to choose The Nephilim, by Fields of Nephilim. The reason why I've gone for this one, not only is it their second album, but it was very hard for me to choose between that and Dawn Razor. Dawn Razor is a very powerful album. I strongly suggest that you check that out, but for me, this one took the cake because when you listen to it, you just feel like in this trance of shoegaze and wonder. It metaphorically describes the journey of when you depart and from the loss. It's kind of like when your soul is traveling around the world, it can't get out and just shows so much emotion into this. The songs I definitely recommend from this one, obviously we're going to go for Moonchild because everyone knows that, it is a good song. Uh, we're going to go for Call of Souls as well. 
We are also, well, to be fair, you might as well just listen to the whole album because there's, there's not one song which is wrong on that album. And I strongly, strongly stand my word to that. Okay, the next one is an EP and it's Death Cult by Death Cult. Now, Death Cult was the original name given from the cult. It originally was Death Cult, Southern Death Cult, then the cult. I personally chose this one because despite me not being a massive fan of the cult's earlier stuff, like She Sell Sanctuary, good song, but I like to keep things more to the roots. And weird enough, I actually have it with me on vinyl. So for those who want a little bit, who don't know what to look for, just look for this one. As you can see, it's got the whole graphic attire, you can tell this is very, very early 80s stuff. And the songs I do recommend, bear in mind there's only like four songs on this, I definitely recommend the first one, but there's Grimm, uh, Ghost Dance as well. But to be fair, just check this out and you can see this is such heavily goth attire before the cult decided to go to a different route and I really strongly suggest that. I mean it. Next one, okay, we always get into this conversation about death rock and goth rock, but it's heavily cemented within overall goth as an umbrella term. It's going to have to be mentioned, only fear to paint. Now, I know this is like the first one everyone goes to, and this was really hard for me to choose between that and the Catastrophe Ballet. The Catastrophe Ballet's got so much good stuff. If you want to check some stuff out, I personally tried to I recommend not only Drowning, but I also recommend my personal favourite from that one, Beneath Her Widow. You cannot go wrong with that one, it's beautiful, luxury tears as well, but we're going to be talking about the first album. Now the first album is extremely powerful because it's what cemented the American death rock music. Ros Williams did a brilliant job creating this eerie vibe, which I really wish that Christian Death still kept in their overall transition. The songs I do recommend from this one is going to be Cavity. A really good song. Uh, Romance of Stress, everyone knows. We're also going to be going for Spiritual Crap. It's just these ones which you can't go wrong. If you listen to the whole thing, it's just this real nice blend fusion of dark, mysterious, overall creepy vibe. It, it's the epitome of macabre music. Okay, the next one I'm going to go for is Junkyard. Now, Junkyard is a album released by The Birthday Party. I know there are a lot of ones a little more familiar, ones which are more iconic within that, but I go with Junkyard because it's one of these which you just can't go wrong. It's one of these albums that you listen to it and you can tell that they branched their new form, their own version of Australian golf. Very similar to Death Rock and very similar to like the alien sex ring sound of the back he had. Once again, they were actually quite heavily played in the back of music and performed there. But for this one, I recommend it because not only has it got a vibe to it, it's not just all drone and creepiness, but it tends to have a little bit of a rockabilly vibe, which I really didn't expect when I first heard it. And you can hear like the transition of that creative sound. Once again, release the bass is something that everyone is going to listen to because that is a heavily recommended, uh, recommended song. Everyone's recommended are Gold Blade, Dead Joe as well. It's one of these where it's okay to take my word for it, but I honestly advise you to not only just listen to those songs I recommended, but to also listen to the whole album. Okay, this one is a band which I haven't mentioned before because they were tend to be more on the punk side until during their transition in the 80s, but this album you can't refuse. It's a song which is heavily renowned within um, the gothic community, and this is Phantasmagoria by The Dan. The reason why I like this one is it shows a different vibe to goth which I found. When you listen to the whole album, when I first listened to it, it was goth, you can tell it was goth, but they had a different twist to it. They still had a little bit of the punk vibe, a little bit of the post-punk vibe, but they also had a lot of Victorian themed gothic attire, which they were going for at that time. Once again, the songs I would recommend from this one are Street of Dreams, um, Was It A Dream, mm, Shadow of Love. That was actually the first damn song I heard, and I fell in love with that. You hear that riff, and you just think, Oof, what a goth riff. It's something that you just can't deny, and once you hear it, the whole album, you can kind of see what I mean about the difference between like, the goth that we know from the Batcave era, and then their type of goth. Also, don't forget Grimly English. Okay, number three. This one was pretty hard because it was either between this one or the screen, which I love to pieces. It's got such a raw post-punk vibe, 
but I thought I'd go with this one. Um, this is Tinderbox by Susan the Banshees. Now, a lot of people are going to go to me saying, why did he choose Juju? Juju is a good album, very good, but I found, I found it to be too commercialised. Every person who recommends Susan the Banshees will go for Juju. I'm not saying it's a bad album, I do like it, but I think Tinderbox has been heavily, heavily underrated for many reasons. A single box I like because it has sort of a vibe of like the gothic guitars and gothic um, satire to it, but also has a very soft side to it as well. It's just a nice little blend, it kind of makes you feel like you're lost in a wonderland in many ways. The songs I recommend from this one are Candyman, Cities in Dust, The Sweetest Chill, and Land's End. Now, this is a really, really beautiful album I find, and I really wish that you would probably check this one out. Okay, number two, this one is a very close one to the number one. The second one I'm choosing is First, Last and Always by Sisters of Mercy. Now the reason why I prefer this one to Floodlands is because Floodlands is a good album, it's very heavily context within the progression of the movement of goth, but I find First, Last and Always to be more interesting. What I mean by that is, during when Wayne Hussey was still in the band, he brought this vibe, this gothic riff style, this sound to Sister Mercy, and that is just something that I've always adored. Tried listening to Floodlands and Vision Things, it was good, I still love the albums, but with this one it just means a lot more to me because it still had that passionate sound to it, and it's a very underlooked album. I, find, I know many goths who actually prefer, prefer this album to Floodlands and they end up getting massacred in like the comment sections and whatever from other elitist opinions. But with this one, I do prefer it a lot, and there are so many good songs in this one, so I'm only going to recommend a few. I'm going to recommend my favourite one of theirs, which is Walk Away, uh, Rock, A Rock in a Hard Place, No Time to Cry, Black Planet, Marianne. I probably sure missed some really key ones, but these are just my personal favourites. And lastly, no surprise, this one is a Bauhaus one. And this one is my personal favourite because this is the album that got me into the goth genre and subculture. It's Burning on the Inside. Now, Burning on the Inside, I prefer so much better to In the Flat Fields and The Sky's Gone Out because it was something that not only was it when Bauhaus surely broke up in 83, but it was something that kind of helped cement their overall status. Excluding She's in Parties because everyone knows that song too well. It's a very good song, but if you're going to go for like the more creepier side, the more theatrical side that Peter Murphy and the rest of the band did, I definitely recommend stuff like Who Killed Mr. Moonlight, A Slice of Life, Honeymoon Crew, and just a little bit of fun, the 17 second interlude was. And there you go, I really hope you enjoyed this video, I really hope that you took on board what I said about these albums, uh, please give them a, a listen to, hopefully that you'll enjoy them as much as I have. If you like this video, please give a like, um, subscribe if you wish, and if you want, share it along. I'll see you very soon.